Vampire Hunters, Immortal Warriors, a Zack Snyder space epic, 2022 and beyond is going to be mind-blowing. Which movies are you most excited for? A good slasher franchise never really dies, and in 2022, Scream is going to prove it. The much-anticipated fifth film in the franchise marks the beginning of a new era for the series, being the first installment made without the involvement of director Wes Craven, who passed away in 2015. But that doesn't mean the film will be without any familiar faces. Original Scream stars Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, and David Arquette have all signed on to reprise their characters, promising a major reunion for the characters who have managed to survive ever since the first film debuted in 1996. Considering the presence of those original cast members, everyone knew they could expect more of a sequel than a reboot with Scream. But the first trailer for the film actually offered an intriguing hybrid of both. In the trailer, Sydney and company learn that a new killer has donned the iconic Ghostface costume to terrorize the town of Woodsboro, echoing what they experienced 25 years ago. A new group of teenagers is in peril this time, though, and Sydney and her friends might be the key to their survival. Directed by Ready or Not Matt Bettinelli Olpin and Tyler Gillette, Scream is scheduled to arrive in theaters on January 14, 2022. In 2012, director Scott Derrickson and screenwriter C. Robert Cargill released their first collaboration, Sinister, a film still widely viewed as one of the best original horror stories to emerge from the 2010s. Now, after shifting focus to work on projects such as Doctor Strange, the duo are headed back to their horror roots with The Black Phone, another terrifying film with a very creepy premise. The Black Phone is an adaptation of the short story of the same name, written by Joe Hill author of books such as Horns and co-creator of the hit comic Lock and Key. It tells the story of a teenage boy who's abducted and locked in a basement by a serial killer. Though no one can hear him down in the killer's lair, the boy finds that he can hear something through a seemingly disconnected telephone kept in the room. The voices of the killers are the victims, gone but still somehow speaking through this mysterious black phone. Derrickson and Cargill announced their involvement in the project in October 2020. More recently, Blumhouse Productions and Universal Pictures have announced that the Black Phone will land in theaters February 4, 2022. With films like Independence Day and The Day After Tomorrow, director Roland Emmerich helped define the modern action blockbuster as we know. He's a master when it comes to making entertaining films with truly bonkers premises, and in 2022, he'll try to do it again with Moonfall. The film will follow a crew of misfits as they attempt a desperate mission to venture out into space and prevent the moon from colliding with the Earth. So it's a particularly apt Roland Emmerich premise. And the first footage for the film revealed we're getting exactly what it says on the tin. That is, the moon falling out of the sky and a bunch of scientists trying to figure out a way to save the world. Joining Emmerich for this wild ride is an all-star cast led by Halle Berry, Patrick Wilson, and John Bradley. Though it went through a pretty wild pre-production ride due to the pandemic, the film is now on track for a release date of February 4th, 2022. With his 2015 directorial debut, The Witch, director Robert Eggers established himself as one of the most intriguing horror directors around. He only cemented that reputation in 2019 with The Lighthouse, an even stranger journey into darkness that stunned the critics and weirded out general audiences everywhere. Let Neptune strike ye dead, Winslow! Hark! With two films under his belt, Egger's next project is The Northman, yet another historical film that will feature an epic scope unlike anything he's directed previously. A story of the legendary Scandinavian prince Amleth, the film will allow Eggers to exercise his detailed approach to period filmmaking, while working with his biggest all-star cast yet. So who's set to star? In the title role, Eggers has landed the very appropriate Alexander Skarsgård, and the Northman will also reunite the filmmaker with his witch star, Anya Taylor-Joy. After filming amid pandemic conditions in 2020, The Northman is now set for release on April 22, 2022. In the spring of 2022, just over five years after his MCU debut, Doctor Strange will finally get his very first sequel. Marvel Studios announced at San Diego Comic-Con that director Scott Derrickson and star Benedict Cumberbatch would both return for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which Derrickson promised would be the first truly scary film in the MCU. However, Derrickson vacated the director's chair due to creative differences early in 2020 with Spider-Man and Evil Dead legend Sam Raimi quickly stepping up to replace him. 
Strange won't be the only hero in the flick, however. He'll be joined by Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch, who will be played once again by Elizabeth Olsen. Wanda's appearance in the film will tie in directly to the events of the Disney Plus series WandaVision. They'll also be joined by much of the original movie's cast, along with newcomer Soshi Gomez as America Chavez. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness hits theaters May 6, 2022. In 2018, the billion-dollar Transformers movie franchise got a shake-up with Bumblebee, a spin-off prequel hybrid that moved the action to the 1980s and generated new energy in a franchise that's been running since 2007. In 2022, the franchise will seek to replicate that success with Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Like Bumblebee, Rise of the Beasts will be a period piece, set in 1990s Brooklyn and introducing several new breeds of alien robots to the film series. This time around, human characters played by Leeds Anthony Ramos and Dominique Fishback will encounter Beast War characters such as the Maximals and the Predacons, as an ancient conflict comes to Earth in the form of the villainous Terracons. So far, we know very little about the voice cast, but Peter Cullen is expected to return as the iconic Optimus Prime, and the legendary Ron Perlman will join the franchise as Optimus Primal, leader of the Maximals. Transformers Rise of the Beasts roars into theaters June 2023. Captain Marvel was a game-changer for the MCU when it debuted in 2019. It was the first female-led Marvel Studios superhero film, one which also managed to introduce a key alien race to the universe while expanding another and setting the stage for more future superheroines along the way. Captain Marvel 2 was always going to be a big film, and now it's starting to become clear just how big it will be. Higher, further, faster, baby. Nia da Costa is set to direct the adventure for Carol Danvers, but Captain Marvel won't be fighting alone. She'll be joined by Tiana Paris as Monica Rambeau, an adult version of the child of Carol's best friend from the first film, who made her full debut in WandaVision. Joining the two of them will be Iman Vellani as Kamala Khan, aka Ms. Marvel, a Captain Marvel superfan turned superhero who's about to debut in her own original series on Disney+. And with these three together, it's no wonder that the film has been renamed The Marvels. The movie is set to hit theaters February 17, 2023. A third Guardians of the Galaxy film felt like a foregone conclusion even before Volume 2 hit theaters in the spring of 2017. But to say the road to get there has been complicated might be something of an understatement. The film was originally on track to start production in 2018, but that changed when writer-director James Gunn was fired by Disney over controversial tweets from years prior. Gunn was ultimately reinstated, but not before he'd already landed a prime gig at Warner Brothers, writing and directing The Suicide Squad. Still, Marvel Studios agreed to hold on to the project until Gunn was ready. So Gunn went off to make The Suicide Squad, which then also led to the HBO Max spin-off series Peacemaker, which further delayed work on the adventures of the Guardians. Finally, in the spring of 2021, Marvel announced that Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 will arrive in theaters May 5, 2023 six years to the day after Volume 2 landed. It might feel like a long wait, but there will at least be something in between. In December 2020, Disney announced that Gunn and the original Guardians cast will also produce the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, set before the third film, which will hit Disney Plus in December 2022. With the arrival of Disney+, Plus, Marvel Studios entered a new era, one in which new stories are set to emerge on the big screen after first taking root on the small. WandaVision, for example, is set to continue its tale in some form via Wanda Maximoff's appearance in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And while nobody previously knew what the Falcon and the Winter Soldier might do to the big picture, we now have a much better idea. It's kicking off a new Captain America movie. In April 2021, hours after the finale of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier arrived on Disney+, Plus, it was reported that the show's head writer, Malcolm Spellman, is developing a fourth Captain America film for Marvel Studios. Very little is known about what Spellman's film might cover, including exactly who will appear in it. But his work on the Disney Plus series left plenty of clues. The MCU has a new Captain America for one, as well as a vengeful old Cap in John Walker, a weapons dealer installed in the US espionage community, the Winter Soldier still in the big picture, and much, much more. It's not clear yet when this film will hit theaters, but it's bound to be worth keeping an eye on during the MCU's next phase. Almost immediately after Knives Out became a major mystery hit over the 2019 holiday season, writer-director Ryan Johnson began talking about potential plans for a sequel. Those plans took very solid shape in the spring of 2021, when Netflix signed on to a deal worth hundreds of millions of dollars that would set Johnson & Company up for two Knives Out sequel films on the streaming giant. 
With the backing of Netflix and a lot of goodwill built up from the first film, Johnson set to work and began building a predictably stacked cast. While the first Knives Out film boasted an impressive roster of talent, only Daniel Craig is expected to return from the first film, reprising his role as private detective Benoit Blanc. It makes no damn sense. It compels me, though. The nature of the mystery this time around remains unclear, although it has been confirmed that at least some of the film has been shot in Greece. On top of that, the ensemble Johnson is building to populate the new story is just as impressive as that in the original movie. In the first half of 2021, the production added a ton of major stars to its cast, including Dave Bautista, Edward Norton, Janelle Monet, Katherine Hahn, Leslie Odom Jr., and Kate Hudson. The Knives Out sequel doesn't have a firm release date yet. But watch out for when it finally hits Netflix. It might just be the all-star mystery to end all other all-star mysteries. In the summer of 2019, Marvel Studios surprised fans everywhere during their Hall H presentation at San Diego Comic-Con, with the reveal that two-time Academy Award winner Mahershala Ali had been cast as Blade in the MCU. After Wesley Snipes, Ali will be the second actor to portray the iconic daywalker vampire hunter in live action. And while it took two years to really get moving, the project is finally starting to take shape. Deadline reported in July 2021 that director Bassam Tariq, best known for the film Mogul Mowgli, has signed on to helm the upcoming new incarnation of Blade. Though the studio was reportedly originally looking for a writer-director to lead the film, Marvel Studios head Kevin Feige eventually decided to separate those duties. Stacey Oseka 4, best known for her work on acclaimed TV series like Hunters and Watchmen, is set to write the film's script. Sadly, there's not much in the way of plot information about the film just yet, nor have Marvel set a firm release date. That said, the studio has two talented up-and-comers working behind the scenes and an Oscar-winning icon set to play a vampire hunter. So no matter when it comes out, this one's bound to be a winner. When Birds of Prey arrived in 2020, it seemed to provide a couple of key ingredients for the future of the DCEU. The first and most obvious was a continued stepping stone for Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn to grow and prosper in the universe. The second was a whole new range of scene-stealing supporting characters who could presumably spin off into their own films, should the interest be there. Well, it took a little while, but the first of those potential spin-offs is finally on the way. In August 2021, Collider reported that HBO Max is developing a Black Canary film starring Journey Smollett in the title role, returning as a character after her big-screen debut in Birds of Prey. Joining her on the project is Misha Green, who developed the acclaimed HBO series Lovecraft Country, in which Smollett also starred. Right now, no plot details have been forthcoming, so it's not clear what the Black Canary movie will deal with or where in the DCEU timeline it'll pick up with the character. But the project joins an ever-growing list of HBO Max projects designed to tie into Warner Brothers' theatrical releases for DC Comics characters. Among the other announced projects, the studio is also releasing a Gotham City police drama tied to the Batman a Peacemaker series tied to the Suicide Squad, and a Batgirl film that will reportedly feature the return of J.K. Simmons as Commissioner Jim Gordon. In the summer of 2020, Netflix released The Old Guard, a fantasy action film based on the comic of the same name by Greg Rucker and Leandro Fernandez. The film promptly became one of the biggest hits the platform has ever seen. In a pandemic-stricken world where people couldn't safely visit movie theaters, The Old Guard delivered the blockbuster-style action that audiences were craving at the time, and its success paved the way for a sequel. After months of teasing throughout 2021, Netflix finally confirmed in August that a follow-up to the film was indeed on the way, with a new director at the helm. Deadline reported that Victoria Mahoney, who's directed episodes of series such as Lovecraft Country and helmed the second unit for Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, has signed on to direct The Old Guard 2. The original movie's director, Gina Prince-Bythewood, announced at the same time that she elected to step away from the sequel to focus on other projects, but that she also personally endorsed Mahoney's hire. Charlize Theron and her Old Guard co-star Kiki Lane are both set to return for the sequel, which will be written by Rucker and co-writer David Ellison. It does not yet have a firm release date. After years of working at Warner Brothers Pictures, where he helped build a whole universe of Justice League heroes, Zack Snyder has moved on to Netflix, where he's found a whole new degree of creative freedom and ambition. The streaming giant launched its first Snyder project, the zombie heist film Army of the Dead, in 2021, and now Snyder's hard at work on his next Netflix original, one which will take him into space. I got a bad feeling about this. In August 2021, Snyder revealed that his next film as a director will be Rebel Moon, 
a project that originated as a Star Wars pitch years ago that he's since developed into a standalone sci-fi adventure. Inspired by both Star Wars and his lifelong love of the films of Akira Kurosawa, Rebel Moon will follow the members of a peaceful space colony as they gather warriors to help them fight a tyrannical empire. It basically sounds a bit like Seven Samurai in space, which has definitely been done before, but it's a fun premise nonetheless. The mummy and atomic blonde actor Sophia Boutella is set to star. Rebel Moon doesn't yet have a release date, but Snyder hopes to begin production sometime in 2022. Three decades ago, long before the superhero movie boom kicked off, Disney released The Rocketeer, a period adventure film about a young, high-flying adventurer battling Nazis with a jetpack he got by way of Howard Hughes. The film didn't enjoy much of a reception when it was released in 1991, but time has been very kind to it, and The Rocketeer is now remembered as a classic of its era, one that's long overdue for a sequel. In August 2021, Disney revealed that a sequel is finally on the way with the return of The Rocketeer, a Disney Plus original film that's set to put the spotlight on a new version of the iconic hero. The new film, which doesn't yet have a firm release date, will be written by Now You See Me screenwriter Ed Reichert, and it will follow a Tuskegee Airman who becomes the new Rocketeer. Oscar nominee David Oyelowo is set to produce the film and may also end up starring. At this point, nobody has any idea how long it will take for the return of the Rocketeer to show up. But one thing is for sure, it can't happen soon enough. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.